Hi, welcome to The Inner Way. I'm your host, Father David Smith. Today in the Orthodox Church is Great and Holy Friday, the day that we commemorate the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we've been reading from uh, the writings of St. Isaac the Syrian. St. Isaac writes about the cross of Christ a number of times in his homilies, beautiful writing uh, about this and about how the cross is connected to the love of God for us, that it was love that put Jesus on the cross. Some very beautiful passages, and perhaps, you know, in the coming uh, weeks or months, depending on how long I do the video series, um, we may look at some of those. Today I want to look at uh, a passage from homily number 59, and uh, a very simple uh, passage. It goes like this. The path of God is a daily cross. No one has ascended into heaven by means of ease, for we know where the way of ease leads and how it ends. God never wishes the one who gives himself up to him with his whole heart to be without concern, that is, concern over the truth. But from this he knows that he is under God's providence that he perpetually sends him griefs. Okay, um, the, the part of that passage that I really want us to think about today is just the first line, the path of God is a daily cross. The path of God is a daily cross. Uh, I know that uh, I've spoken in the past about uh, those who believe that the Christian life should be a matter of living a um, uh, happy and carefree life, that the purpose of Christianity is to make us happy. And yet, that is not the, that is not the teaching of the New Testament. It's not the teaching of the church fathers. It's not the teaching of our Lord. And frankly, it's not the teaching of experience either. When we become committed to our Lord, committed to his kingdom, committed to being citizens of his kingdom, we find that life doesn't get easier, doesn't get happier, in fact, may become less easy and more unhappy. And yet, that lack of ease and that unhappiness gains meaning for us when we become Christians, that we learn what it is to daily take up the cross. Now, when I uh, get ready to celebrate the Divine Liturgy and I put on my vestments, I, uh, I have a cross that I put on and uh, given to me by our Metropolitan. And um, when I put that cross on, I always say the same thing. Anyone who would follow after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Now, it's kind of a little prayer. I mean, we pray when we put each part of our vestments on. That's not really a prayer. What I'm doing is I'm quoting from uh, St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 9. Now, if you look in the liturgy book, it's the quote is a little bit different. It's actually a quote, I think, from St. Mark's Gospel. The reason that I, I, I kind of switched it on my own, I switched over to the quotation, same passage, from St. Luke's Gospel, is because of the presence of one word, actually two in Greek, katimeran, 
uh, but one word in English daily. Anyone who would follow after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. I love that St. Luke added that word, or St. Luke heard Jesus say that word and included it in his writings because it is it is a tendency for us to sort of um, be annoyed with problems, with uh, difficulties that we encounter in our lives. And we say to ourselves, why am I suffering? Why do my prayers not work? Why am I getting more grief than uh, is fair for me to get? Why, why, is, why do bad things happen to me? And we say that because we forget about the cross. How did Jesus forgive us of our sins? He paid for those sins on the cross, suffering on the cross. And so when we become his followers and we begin the task of achieving godliness, we also take on the task of suffering in this world. Now, the part about uh, this this day, Great and Holy Friday in the Orthodox Church, is that uh, what I what we do in the church liturgically has much to do with the lifting up of Christ on the cross. Now we did that last night. Uh, on Great and Holy Thursday in the evening, we process with the cross, and then we put it up in the front, and then we put an icon of Christ up on the cross, the corpus of Christ up on the cross. We lift him up. This act, lifting up, is an integral part of the liturgical life of the church, but also of the spiritual life of every Christian. Three times during the liturgy, I do this action of lifting up. I lift up the gospel, I lift up the chalice and the paten, and later I lift up the lamb that is to be slain. So this lifting up, and when, I, when I'm celebrating the Divine Liturgy, I try to reach as high as I possibly can. I want my people sitting in the church to see over my head the things that I've lifted up. And the reason for that is because this lifting up is important for us. Now, there's a number of reasons. Uh, there are, there are num not reasons, but there are a number of points that can be made about the lifting up of Christ on the cross. Uh, I, just, I just read a very uh, interesting uh, sermon lately about you know, Jesus as the snake. Jesus as the snake. And he is... He is, uh, this is from St. John's Gospel, where uh, it says, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Uh, I can't remember, St. John's, maybe second, it's earlier in St. John's Gospel. Um, that the, the, this lifting up, the reason that Moses lifted up that bronze serpent in the wilderness was so that everyone could see it. Everyone could see it. And then later on in the Gospel of St. John, Jesus says, um, this is in I don't know, 12, chapter 12 or something like that, um, where he says, you know, the, um, 
uh, when the Son of Man is lifted up, he will draw all the world to himself. Now, the word lifted up, or the words lifted up, uh, really refer to crucifixion. It was a way of saying crucifixion in uh, you know, the first century Middle East. So lifted up was not just simply a matter of going like this, but lifted up meant you got crucified. You were lifted up on a cross. And so the people who heard him say that when the Son of Man is lifted up responded by saying, well, then you're not the Messiah because the Messiah lives forever. And if you're lifted up, that's a death sentence. So the two can't be uh, put together. But, well, the two have been put together. Jesus was lifted up on the cross and lives forever. But the key to that is that when he is lifted up on the cross, not only does the whole world see him, but we see him. We see him. We must take up our cross daily. We must constantly keep our eyes on that image of Christ suffering for the world and suffering for us, for you and for me. This, this is such an important image. How many crosses do, you know, do, I don't know about you, but I have. I mean, uh, almost all of the books I have have a cross somewhere on them. I own uh, a number of neck crosses. I own probably 10 hand crosses, including one that was hand painted for me by an iconographer. It's my, my favorite one. I have a cross that I wear when I celebrate the liturgy. I make the sign of the cross continually throughout the day. We have the cross always before us as a reminder that we that the cross is a way of self-denial a cross the cross is a way of suffering for the world as saint isaac said no one has ascended into heaven by means of ease for we know where the way of ease leads and how it ends Sometimes we find ourselves sitting and thinking, oh man, wouldn't it be great if I had all of the money that, that I, that all of the money that I needed for the rest of my life and I could just do whatever I wanted to do and just live however I wanted to live and had no more problems. Guess what? you would have a lot of problems, not only related to rich people things, you would have problems because you would not have the suffering that the cross offers us. You would not have that, uh, that uh, inclination to look up at the cross and to take up that cross daily. I know people who have so much money that they don't have to worry about anything. And generally speaking, I don't say this because I'm jealous at all. I say this because it's true. They're not happy people. They act like happy people, at least at times, but they're not happy people. The concept is that we look up constantly to the cross to, re to remind us that when we are suffering, we are participating in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ and in growth in godliness. Well, God bless you. In our church today, it's a very holy day, Great and Holy Friday. Um, but I pray that no matter what day you're watching this, that it is a day when you lift up your eyes to the cross, take up that symbol, take up that instrument, and follow Christ. 
Well, we'll continue uh, with our uh, look at St. Isaac of Syria. Even though Lent is over, uh, he has a, a lot more in his uh, homilies that we can look at. I hope you can join us again next week. And until then, God bless you, and I'll see you in church. <music>